Florida State 1-0 and on the year, having vanquished the Kansas Jayhawks out of the Big 8, 42 to nothing. The shutout victory pitched a week ago in the Meadowlands in Giant Stadium. And Duke out of the shoot for the first time here tonight. You know, Paul, Florida State without an opening game shutout since about 1980, I believe it was LSU, out in Baton Rouge. Very happy to come away from that Kansas ball game with the offense performing as it did, the defense with that goal line stand we talked about, and, and those types of things, uh, the intangibles coming uh, so quickly together. The highly touted freshman kicking specialist, Scott Bentley, from Aurora, Colorado, with the ball on the tee. And he'll be kicking deep to Brad Breedlove, a Florida native, along with Leroy Goldman. And we are finally underway. In fact, it's David Lawman. And not Goldman back there, but this comes up short to an up man and across the 25 to the 30 and to the 33 uh, yard line on the return for Duke. It's Gavin Gray, a senior from Portsmouth, Rhode Island. So pretty good field position for Duke as Ken Alexander, the linebacker, hustled down and made the tackle for Florida State, a return of 18 yards. And there is Joe Pickens, the transfer from Ohio State, a native of Brooklyn, Ohio, one of the more highly touted high school quarterbacks three years ago. Signed with the Buckeyes, played two seasons, changed his mind and transferred. And out of the eye on first down, it is the tailback up to the 36-yard line. And Todd Rebull, the inside linebacker, made the stop. You will see that the Loman on the uh, carry there will be led by Robert Baldwin, the fullback. Brad Breedlove scored a touchdown, Florida native, against the Knolls last year. And the offensive line, all returning starters. And Jerome Egg anchors him at center. On second down, eating seven, swinging it out of the backfield. The pass complete to Robert Baldwin. He slips a tackle. And Baldwin up to the 39-yard line. A senior from DeLand, Florida, playing against the team from his native state. And strong safety, Devin Bush for FSU, made the stop. And we've arrived at third down. Tyrant Marion, John Nance, Derek Alexander, an impact player a year ago as a freshman. The front wall for FSU. James Roberson, Ken Alexander, Todd Rebull, and big play artist Derek Brooks, the linebacking core. And you see the secondary as well. Third down for the Dukies. Baldwin shifts to the near side. Quick catch. And the slant. Skipped up. Caught. Yes, it's ruled a completion by Brad Bradlove for a first down at the 46-yard line. Your slants and your short curls are going to be open most of the night, Paul, with the field as slick and wet as it is. Defensive backs are going to be given a lot of cushion. That time, Corey Sawyer, number eight, reading inside, doing a lot of backpedaling, giving Breedlove that opportunity on the slant. Duke converts that first third down opportunity. So Joe Pickens' first ever passing attempt in a Duke jersey is a completion and a first down. No score, just underway. And from the shotgun. A page out of FSU's offensive arsenal. Here is Pickens dealing to the far side and incomplete. You see how wet the footing is out there. Stanley Dorsey, the senior wide receiver with the pass thrown behind him, could not make a tough catch. Pickens a big kid, Paul. 6'4", 220. Sat out all of last year under the NCAA transfer rule. Came in the spring ball, was competing with Spencer, or Spence Fisher, rather and actually took the job away from Fisher, the junior returning with the number one slot. Now Pickens leading the Duke attack. Four receivers on second down for Duke and 10. Florida State jumps, penalty markers down on inside handoff as well. Tijan Redmond, the tailback, maybe a yard. Earlier in the week, we talked to Coach Barry Wilson of Duke to gather his thoughts on trying to face Florida State. Well, I think Florida State, even last year, whether they were number one at, in their place or here, uh, Florida State is always, in everybody's uh, opinion, is going to be in the top five. And once you get on that level, 
to me, it doesn't make any difference. Now, it's a nice target. It would be a wonderful way for us to kick off our season mm -hmm. is to beat the number one team in the nation. But as I've said before, if we would beat Florida State, I think I would have a scrimmage about 8 o'clock Sunday morning just to bring our team and our coaching staff back down to earth. <laughs> they picked up five off the penalty on sides. And, and again, it's an inside handoff to Redmond, and he shoved right back, setting up third down. So Barry Wilson quite realistic about his chances tonight as a decided underdog against FSU. Absolutely. What you're looking to do if you're on the Duke side of the ball is to execute what you need to in order to be successful against those teams when you can match competition. It's not unlikely that Duke could come uh, at their home park with the weather as it is and upset Florida State, but it's not likely. So what you want to do is work on those things which are going to make you a better football team as you go through your season. Possession snap for Duke. They converted on third and three a short while ago. Can they match here about third and four and a half? The football just inside Florida State territory and the left guard, Steve Alderford, jumped the snap count. And it'll be third and long now for Duke. The first penalty of the evening on the Blue Devils. And it was a senior captain that made the mistake in Alderford. Joe Ryder has had to play meteorologists in addition to being a referee this evening. There was a lot of activity going down on going on down on the field the, this afternoon and early evening. A lot of activity going on up here in the booth, too. Barry Wilson, you see him in the uh, rain suit with the uh, headset. He's hired a new offensive coordinator in Buddy Geis out of the National Football League. Buddy worked a great deal with Lindy Infante at Green Bay. And for the Florida State defensive staff, they aren't quite certain what to expect. Duke more multiple this year they're anticipating and you see they're shifting here on third and close to 10 yards the blitz is on pickens gets it away and it's floated incomplete all the way downfield at the 30-yard line a big hammer laid on pickens he ends up on the flat of his back and uh, duke is going to have to punt mcknight came blitzing from the secondary Florida State with an all-out blitz, man-to-man -man coverage, a little bit of a daring opportunity for uh, Florida State and Duke. Duke doesn't capitalize. Here's another interesting story. John Kruger, the punter for Duke, number 19, just a freshman, first collegiate snap. Can he get it away? He does. Not a bad kick. Corey Sire for Florida State makes the tiptoe catch at his 16-yard line and uh, steps out of bounds. No score. First quarter in Durham. Florida State's opening possession this evening begins inside its own 20-yard line. And here comes Sean Jackson ripping off the left side from the tailback position. And he blows out for a gain of eight. Charlie Ward at the helm. The Atlantic Coast Conference Player of the Year. The senior from Thomasville, Georgia. You know all about him. Running tonight, the fast break offense. The no huddle out of the shotgun. Florida State is multiple as any team in the college game. And Ward will dispatch Knox to the far side left. To the near side right comes Matt Fryer on second down. Two and a half yards to go. Out of the shotgun, inside handoff, big hole, Jackson. Jackson with the first down, and he slides on the wet turf, shy of the 30. The front line for Florida State offensively, the youngest, Keith, that Bobby Bowden has put on the field to open a year. The oldest fellow there, a junior, Patrick McNeil, the right guard, everyone else sophomore. Four sophomores. Of course, Shiver's been around so long, you think he's been there since about 85. You see them going up at the defensive line against Duke Pearson, Schofield, Waffle, and Marks. They run the 4-3. We'll get to the linebackers and the defensive backs in just a moment. On first down, play action for Charlie, being harassed back at his 35. In front, look at him, a loop tacklers across the 40, a first down. How did he escape the grasp of Dwayne Marks, number 99, the senior right in? Ward, improvising, earns the second first down on FSU's opening possession. Unlike the other down four linemen for Duke, Marks did not play against Florida State last year. That's his first look at Charlie on the sprint out and... Uh, Welcome to uh, playing the number one team in the country. Lenoll shift into the eye. A fullback Floyd, the tailback Jackson. Floyd, his first carry, lowers his head and moves the pile. The 240-pound junior two-year letterman from St. Petersburg is about as powerful a runner 
as there is in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And it's the interior of that wall led by Warren Scoville here, starting tonight for Scott Yeomans, who was injured, the senior captain, that made the stop. Scott Burdan taking over at the inside linebacker position, a fiery leader. And you see the secondary with Wells, the Jacksonville, Florida native we talked about earlier. Second down and six for FSU. Jackson, a bit of a hole, and then it closes as Scoville, the 265-pound senior left tackle, stuck him good. Scoville starting ahead or in place of Scott Yeomans, who went down in preseason practice with another knee injury. I talked to Brad Scott before the game today, Paul, and I was asking him, do you have the complete repertoire of plays when you go from the no huddle? He says, yeah. He says the only thing we had to do is learn a few more sign language moves. Only two wide receivers here. Florida State somewhat conservative. If they can get the three on the ground and uh, shaking and baking. Sean Jackson looking for a hole. Found one on the right side. It's another first down, the third of the march for the Knowles. Sean Jackson, who a week ago scored two touchdowns against Kansas. Rushed for 64 yards. The New Orleans native. What a way to open your final year before the eyes of America and in the Big Apple by scoring not once but twice. Of course, the uh, ball, as it were, rest on his shoulder or in his arm with Tiger McMillan going down in preseason and out for the year. They're looking to Jackson to carry the load. Inside handoff once again. Jackson's getting a lot of work. This field has a crown on it and obviously has not drained very well. Unlike the field at uh, the playing service in Tallahassee, it does not have the suction pumps beneath the surface that will remove the water quickly. Exactly. All that can do is allow the water to seep down into a seep away from that crown, and it's not a very severe crown, just a kind of a medium crown, and we've had a soaking rain here, as we've mentioned uh, for about 50 times already, for about four and a half hours. Jackson's already been utilized Five, six times, gained 28 yards. The second man, or third man to carry it, second out of the tailback position, Marquette Smith. Only 5'7", but powerfully built. Marquette Smith, earning the first down again for Florida State. Scott Burdan, the inside linebacker, made the stop, and you see the rotation begin to develop here between Jackson and Marquette Smith. He himself scored a touchdown. A week ago against the Jayhawks was Florida State's top running back in that game, Keith. He rushed for close to 90 yards. Into the eye with Floyd in front of him. Play action to him for Ward. All the time in the world. Going for six. Touchdown, Florida State. Tamarick Vanover. How fitting is this? that the young man who was the Atlantic Coast Conference Rookie of the Year last year as a freshman would score for the defending ACC champions their first touchdown against an Atlantic Coast Conference foe here in 1993. Absolutely, and I think it's interesting, too, to note that Florida State uh, ran the ball, ran the ball, a little uh, short pass, and then bingo, goes for the home run. You lull them to sleep, and then you burn them. Ward has hurled his first touchdown pass of the night. Vanover on the receiving end. Scott Bentley adds the point after. It's 7-0. Top-ranked Florida State here in Durham. And here again is how it happened. See the good play action. Nice delivery. And away we go. Florida State on offense. As they take over for the second time this evening, and they have a fresh set of uniforms out there. This is John Stark at the helm, and the handoff is given, dropped in his backfield for FSU. It is Marquette Smith. Bobby Bowden tried this against Kansas, running a second team unit out there for just one play. He says it keeps him in the game, Keith. Absolutely, and it gives yourself a lot of depth. We'll talk about that more during the telecast, but getting that team, that second team out there for the first or second snap of every series just keeps them involved and keeps everybody going. Charlie Ward spins, throws, it's batted down. Incomplete. He was hunting the wide receiver on the play, Kevin Knox, and the man who batted it away, Travis Pearson, the senior 
from Plano, Texas. Watch Ward look to his left and then turn back to his right, and right there's big number 80. Pearson hits him right in the face mask. Pearson, the only graduate student on this Duke Blue Devil team. Wish he'd gone to school and a little undergraduate then. He had six. Charlie Ward marking it out to the wide receivers. Third down now, 11. Sets up the screen. Sean Jackson with blockers in front of him. Earns the first with room to spare. Jackson in the open field is almost unfair. He really is. He's so big at 6'2", 220, 222. You see his numbers there out of the backfield catching the ball. He gets up in field. He gets vertical so quickly and so fast, it's almost unfair, Paul. The former Cotton Bowl MVP and a star in the Orange Bowl triumph over Nebraska to conclude last year when he rushed for better than 100 yards. Earns the first for Florida State. The Knowles by a touchdown as Ward changes the play at the line of scrimmage against a four-man Duke front. Jackson with daylight, a flag goes down behind him, and he falls across the 40 to the 42. Maybe a hold on the umpire. And uh, Clark Gaston, very emphatic when he threw the flag. We have holding. Fence. Florida State penalized 15 times last week. You get a good look in there. You see Jackson break through the point of attack. There comes the flag real quick. Again, Jackson just trying to pick those feet up and elude folks. Coach Bowden very concerned about the number of penalties against Kansas last week. 15 was just far too many. Florida State flag for the second time, I believe, here tonight. And quite a few penalty yards last year between these two teams. Florida State penalized 16 times in that game. In Tallahassee, Duke eight times. It was a 48 to 21 null triumph, but nonetheless, three receivers out now for Florida State on the first down and needing 21 yards. And here is Ward. Pulls it down and he's freelancing. Maybe five. It's fitting that this game is played in the very shadows of Cameron Indoor Stadium, where one of a college basketball's great basketball powerhouses reigns. There is Cameron right across the street from here in Wallace Wade. Charlie's played but one game there. The Knowles have yet to win in that stadium, that historic venue. Perhaps it happens next year, but Ward, of course, a two-sport star for Florida State. They reached the Elite Eight. And the Garnet and Gold under Pat Kennedy last year in hoops. Ward unleashes, and it's nearly intercepted. The intended receiver on a wet night in Kaz McCorvey fell. Deep square in pattern. Ward on target. As you see his numbers through tonight, McCorvey loses his footing, and down he goes. Ward State going again, continuing with the no huddle, going with the spread, four wide outs, third and about 14 or 15. Saeed Abdul Alem was the defensive back. The five DBs, then they have that nickel package in there again for Duke. They nearly picked it off. It's third and 16 for Florida State. Again, the screen. Again, it's Jackson. And Jackson very close to the first down as he's hammered at his own 40 yard line by John Zuanich. And the nickel coverage, the sophomore. And listen to the hand now for the defense as no, Jackson did not make it, and the Knowles will have to punt. See number 29 there, Sean Liss. There's his numbers from last week, 55 long. You know, a lot of folks are already starting to compare him to Ron Stark. Maybe a little premature, but he's got all the tools. A 6'4", very tall, and he's kicking to Breedlove. Brad Breedlove from his 25, started right. <laughs> oh, made a mistake. Zig, what he should have zagged. And Derek Brooks, with about a 40-yard head start, ran smack dab into him and dropped him in his tracks. Brooks playing on specialty teams. You don't see that very often, but uh, he's in there, number 10. Florida State's defense allowed a lot of yardage on the last Duke drive, at least by Mickey Andrews' standards. Pickens and company doing a good job of moving down the field, stalling in Florida State territory the last time they had the ball. On that first drive, Pickens completed three passes in six tries for 29 yards putting one hookup of a 19 to his tight end, Dan Clark. Florida State jumps. No flags down. Here's the screen. The Baldwin 
Baldwin has some running room, and he's out across the 35 and up to the 39-yard line. That's a first down for Duke. On the last set of series, Florida State coming with pressure. Duke sensing they might continue that because of the success. You counter that with draws and screens. Baldwin and Pickens doing a great job of executing a very nicely constructed screen. Duke picks up their first down. Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator, and his defensive players and staff watched film of the Green Bay Packers all week long trying to get a pretty good handle on what they anticipated. Offensive coordinator Buddy Geis might do as the new man in directing the Duke attack. Obviously, a Duke is a little more complex offensively this year, and when you're undermanned, quite simply, you have to be fancy to get it done, especially when you're facing one of the great teams in college football like the Noel. Well, Duke very well equipped to throw the ball with Breedlove and Ray Wright on the split inside and flankers and Dorsey and Jensen. And Pickens has shown a tendency, especially in spring practice and early camp, to throw the ball well. Makes that passing game go. Baldwin got a couple of yards the previous snap. Second down here. The blitz. Brooks. Down he goes. Derek Brooks, untouched, has the sack. The first sack of this game for Florida State. Brooks, the kickoff classic MVP. Not very often that you see a defensive player. It come from the bottom of your screen. He just beats his block and just runs right by. Played in a shade tree's shade. No pun intended with Marvin Jones. And now he's getting his own limelight out of Pensacola. 6'1", 220. Very fast, very quick. Approaching about 150 tackles in his career and just a junior in the second game of the season. Well, the quarter has come to an end. That went fast, didn't it? Seven to nothing. Florida State leads Duke. And we'll return with period number two in just a moment. Welcome back to Durham with Keith Jones. I'm Paul Kennedy. Good to have you along coast to coast this evening here on Prime Network. And it rained, uh, as we had told you, for about a good two hours. But it's tough to rain on Bobby Bowden's parade. You can see that the rains have abated. Coach Bowden and company have a, a touchdown advantage. We go to the second period, and Duke now facing third and 18. And Pickens will drop straight back to throw. He's feeling the pressure. He fumbles the football inside his own 20. Tyrant Marion stripped it of the ball. The left defensive end. And it appears that Duke went to the bottom of the pile and recovered it. That would have been disastrous for Duke. The one thing you don't want to do is commit turnovers deep in your own territory. Good swim technique by Marion across the guard. He gets right into Perkins. Pickens rather arm and the ball lays down and alertly a couple of the Duke linemen are there to corral it. Corey Sawyer, the lone man deep. Kruger gets it away. Beautiful punt. It turns over. Sawyer from his 33. To the 40. Great open field tackle, too. Florida State in possession. And the second unit, as is growing increasingly custom with Coach Bobby Bat, on the field. And it is Pooh Bear that wallows in the mud the first snap here. Clarence Williams, the true freshman from Crescent City, Florida. 240 pounder, number 31. On the carry there, he did a nice job. Gained a little over five yards. So we've seen Floyd and Williams now at the fullback position. Jackson and Marquette Smith at the tailback position. Four running backs already. Warwick Dunn along with Clyde Allen and Zay, uh, Crockett, Zach Crockett rather, also dressed tonight. Here is Jackson who's had a busy first half. Slithering his way across midfield for the uh, first down on what is his sixth carry of the night. He's rushed now for 35 yards for number 35. Brad Sherrod, number 56, the captain on the defensive side of the ball, in on the tackle. Haven't called his name much, but you'll probably hear more from him as the ball game progresses. Into the eye, Fryer knocks Vanover. Three wide receivers for Ward, who's going to go upstairs. And looking deep, and it is caught. By Vanover, who fell down, or he might have had a touchdown. Inside the 20, down to the 17-yard line, and Tamarik Vanover, who owns this game's only touchdown, on a reception of 32 yards, comes up with a big gain here of 30. 
Charlie Ward with a nice job of throwing that ball. It has to be wet. Coach Bowden, a big believer that you can throw the ball when it's wet if you just make your mind up to do it. He's obviously instilled that in his players as well. Jackson. Stump by David Waffle. The senior right tackle, the 280 pounder, number 91 there. We'll waffle him along with Warren Scoville. Waffle, one of those guys you just like to have on your team. He, although he's 6'6", 280, he's big. He's also a great worker. Is how the defensive staff categorizes him. Every day, he just goes out and tries to get better. Out of the shotgun and now into the eye set against a four-man front on second and 12 after the loss of two. Ward on the roll. Throw, shoot top level. The fullback in Floyd makes the catch, but gains but three. Tougher catch than it looked like, I'm sure, for William Floyd to hold on to it. Absolutely, and when you're six foot, 245 pounds, to get down that low takes a little bit of effort. You see his numbers, Floyd's numbers from last year, 10 receptions, had a good average of over 13 out of the backfield. He is known to have great hands. He showed them there. Can Duke make Florida State settle for but a field goal try here on third down? Seven to nothing game in the second quarter. Ward looking for the end zone, fires, and it's incomplete. Matt Fryer was very well covered on the play by Sidney Wells. Wells, the Jacksonville, Florida native, did a good job on the veteran Fryer there. Got the North Florida kids. Absolutely, going after each other. Fryer was open momentarily. He was about the number three target for Ward. Ward was looking to the bottom of the screen to his left. Fryer had been had broke open when Charlie saw him. He threw it. Wells did a great job of closing and ended up with excellent coverage. Scott Bentley with the very first field goal try of his career from 33 yards away. And he missed it. And I don't have to tell you, it was wide right. Seven to nothing, still in Durham. Robert Baldwin, the fullback. David Lohman, the tailback. Breedlove and Dorsey, the two wide receivers. Clark, the tight end, set to the near right side. And stacked up at the line of scrimmage is Lohman and driven back. Duke has gone to the air uh, quite frequently. Here keeping it on the ground, uh, Pickens through the air, four of eight for 43 yards. But I think when you're in a ball game on a wet field with Florida State, as Orlando Horner made the stop there, the uh, linebacker for FSU, you want to keep the clock running. Shorten the game if you can. I'm surprised that uh, Duke hasn't tried to run a bit more. Absolutely. You want to keep the number of snaps or the number of drive opportunities down to around 10 or 11 versus the normal 15 or 16 if you want to have any success against this Florida State offense. A loss of a yard and a half on the play. Now they'll run the draw to Loman. Hitting his own backfield, he manages to slip a tackle. Slide left, come across the 20 to the 21-yard line. So Loman getting a good deal of work tonight. T.C. White, Tijon Redman also expected to play, as is J.D. Lewis in a five-man rotation for Coach Barry Wilson. Wilson and company have won only 10 games over the last three years here in Durham, but they are believing with the experience that they have that Duke can turn it around much like they did here in 89 when uh, Steve Spurrier and his Duke staff and players at that time won eight games, went to a bowl game, and were nationally ranked. Barry Wilson was an assistant on that staff as well. On third down, it is picked off by Derek Brooks. Brooks for the end zone. Touchdown, Florida State. Derek Brooks with his first interception of the year also has a touchdown as he races 32 yards for the score. Brooks with a sack on one of the earlier Duke drives now steps right in front of an errant pass. The second opportunity Florida State's had for that. You remember Richard Coe's dropped one earlier. Coach Bowden and his staff happy, but not as excited as Brooks, I'm sure. Scott Bentley to add the extra point for the second time this evening. And he missed it right. No good. 13 to nothing. 
Duke has committed a costly turnover, to say the least. Bentley, however, misfires. Wentfield may have had something to do with it. But Forrest and friends are up by two scores with just under 10 minutes remaining in the first half. Florida State known for taking over a ball game on big plays, whether it's the kicking game or other. This time an interception returned for six. You know, it's going to be interesting as we continue to develop the story. You see there a little over nine minutes left here in the second quarter. Back to Bentley is going to be interesting as we watch the replay here of Brooks stepping in front. I'm not quite sure who Pickens was throwing to. But Brooks steps right in front of it and shows some good speed. You know, Paul, he's about a 4 5 40 guy on that 215, 220 pound frame. He gets out there on the track. He knows what to do there as well. 32 yards and in for six. His linebacker coach, Jim Gladden, has said throughout the preseason work that Derek Brooks was going to have an out of this world season. And he is playing on a higher plane. As Scott Bentley set the tee it up. been kicking away from the deep return set of Duke has twice pitched it this time chops at it again you will have an up man on the return for the Dukies across the 20 up to the 22 yard line that's Leroy Goldman of course one of the very best in the college game at returning kicks and so from his 23 Pickens will be in business once again and the point that we tried to make earlier Keith you can't turn the ball over against Florida State when you're a four touchdown, if not a five touchdown underdog. And not only turn it over, but give Florida State a, a TD. And that's what Duke did. You have to avoid making mistakes. Let's watch and see what Duke does with their attack. They have been trying to throw the ball a little bit, although their first couple of series they did run effectively. Let's see what uh, offensive coordinator Buddy Geis and company is going to do. They had some problem there getting 11 men on the field. Clarence Collins, the left tackle, number 67, was seated on the bench and did not know that the offense was back out there. And Duke is forced to burn a timeout. And now Collins, after reaching the huddle, has been replaced, and he's making the long walk back to the uh, sideline. Sean Hamlet and Byron Capers, two new defensive backs in for Florida State. And on a first down, it's an incomplete pass. Fired by Pickens, hunting Brad Breedlove. He's operating his uh, Pickens on the far left hash, which prompts our producer, John Lou, to remind everybody that we have new hash marks this year. They've been moved in to 60 feet now from the sidelines. Keith, and you as a former defensive back, that certainly would alter your coverage. Absolutely. It takes away what was known as the 12th man, the sideline. It's six feet, eight inches for those of you that care. And you also see there the offensive pass interference rule as well as the other changes. Fresh jerseys abounding for Florida State on the defensive side of the ball and a couple of new running backs in there too. Oh, look out. Stuffed as J.D. Lewis. Jacked up, driven right on back. And, uh, or Baldwin, rather. And the man that made the big hit for FSU is Henry Crockett. The inside linebacker, the redshirt freshman. And number 45, uh, wearing a number that was uh, popularized by Kirk Carruthers. Years gone by makes a Carruthers-like hit. Watch him step right into the hole, right around the guard, in between the guard and the tackle. Meets White head on. Duke now with third and 11. Loss on the play of one. Nine minutes to go in the first half. The Knowles by two touchdowns, leading 13 to nothing. And number 13 in Pickens throws much too high for his intended receiver in J.D. Lewis out of the backfield. Three and out for Duke, which is the last way they wanted to respond to Florida State and Derek Brooks' interception for a touchdown. They have converted but one time tonight as Duke on third down. Just one for six. John Kruger has had a Outstanding debut. The 17 year old freshman is a punter. His last effort of 50 yards against the 10 man rush. This one tumbles off his foot. He had to hustle it, got it across midfield. There is no return possible for Corey Sawyer, and Duke will doubt it. 
at the Knoll 41. Florida State with the football and the two touchdown lead. With 8.43 remaining, and Charlie Ward joins his offense. Having thrown tonight, has Charlie for 92 yards already. He's 5 of 8, and his first completion went for 32 yards to Tamarik Vanover for this game's first score. You also see Florida State for the first time going with the first unit and a huddle. New Jersey for Charlie Ward, it looks like, too. A dry one, hopefully. Out to the flank. On the uh, hitch pass, Mark Vanover squeezed it, danced around, wasn't able to get away from anybody. John Zuanich hit a moving target. The strong safety, the sophomore, to make the stop. There's a, one of the most impressive graphics that uh, we could throw up. Most victories for active coaches, Bowden at 227. He'd have chasing two, 228 now. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Having beaten Kansas. Ward on the screen. Everybody slip sliding. It's a quagmire out there. And Marquette Smith, tiny as he is at 5'7", could not come up with the catch. That, that Bowden graphic there a moment ago prompts us to congratulate Terry Bowden. Bobby's son on his uh, victorious debut for Auburn University against Ole Miss. This is the first time in the history of college football that they've been keeping such records that a father and son have both coached in Division I at the same time. First time ever. So you see Florida State at third and ten. Talked to Sue Hall, Coach Bowden's secretary, and said Friday morning, Coach Bowden, you'd have thought he'd have just won the ball game. He'll be happy, too, with this game. Across midfield to the Duke 48, close to the first down marker. Sean Jackson, very busy in this first half. Knocked down by Zaid Abdul Alim, the left quarterback, the senior from Chicago. And it is just enough for the first down. Ward with his seventh completion, and it is the third this evening that has found the running back in Jackson. Floyd and Jackson remain in the game and now shift into the eye behind Ward. 13 to nothing. Florida State grinding it out on a wet night in Durham. Ward takes off and avoids the hit after gaining about five. Wayne Hogan. The sports information director at Florida State was also kidding. The, uh, the two Bowdens are now the uh, winningest father and son combination, too. Terry has one win. Bobby has 228. Leave it to, uh, leave it to Wayne and company to come up with those uh, interesting factoids that none of us would have ever thought of. We'll be talking to Wayne's boss, Bob Goyne, the director of athletics at halftime here. Another first down for Sean Jackson. Some pushing and shoving further downfield. But the players are separated. Brad Sherrard, the outside linebacker, co-captain, the senior from Marion, North Carolina, made the stop for Duke. And it's a first down. Florida State now earning its fifth first down. According to our numbers here, with just under seven minutes remaining. I think they'd have more than that. Updated. Bouncing off of tacklers. A William Floyd is about as tough as they come. And now a flag away from the football. For the second time in a row, some on-field activity or on away from the ball activity in Florida State. Duke folks uh, exchanging pleasantries. It's obviously against the Dolphins. A dead ball call. Another look out of the shotgun. Very few running plays you can make. Here's one of them. Very few tougher football players on the field than William Floyd making it. You know, an interesting comment Coach Bowden made in the preseason had to do with the penalties. And as we've mentioned, 15 against Kansas last week and 16 against Duke in the opener last year. Second down. When you're number one in the country, when you're visible, when you're highly ranked, you're going to be the target of some cheap shots and some mouths. And Florida State spending a lot of time with their players talking about keeping your cool and don't retaliating because it's the second one that always gets caught. Just under 20 yards needed. During the first, Ward off play action. 
and unable to make the cut. Van over on the far side, so the ball fly over his head and into the Seminole bench. Sean Thomas, the cornerback, the speedster, was in the area. But when Vanover is falling down and unable to connect with Ward, I don't believe anyone's going to be able to because he is one of the very best receivers in the college game. And again, though the rain's not falling currently, that field is absolutely soaked. I think you mentioned earlier a quagmire. We didn't have very many of those in Wildwood. We called those bogs, but a quagmire. Well, we got a bog here tonight. We got a bog. Third down and forever for Florida State. Ward with all the time he needs to throw. And nobody is home at the goal line. Some miscommunication there. It's fourth down, and here comes the punting unit. See Ward throwing his hands up a little bit in exasperation. That's about as much of an emotion as you'll get out of Charlie. Again, his target was Vanover. Vanover broke it off and cut across the middle. Charlie was looking for the corner route deep in the corner. Still a two-touchdown game with 6.03 remaining in the first half, and Sean Liss is set to give it back to Duke. Low snap from center. Liss, fair catch called for and made by Breedlove for Duke. Just outside his 15-yard line. 13 to nothing in Durham on a rainy Saturday night. Play for Duke. Tijan Redmond sweeping the right side. You see the time remaining. Sean Hamlin, the free safety for Florida State, came up to make the stop. Tijon Redman, uh, one of uh, a number of players. They're seven in all for Duke on the offensive side of the ball, and they're two deep in their depth chart that hail from the Sunshine State. Florida State, however, uh, has not recruited a player that's currently on its roster from the Tar Heel State, North Carolina. Duke would call it the Blue Devils State, of course. Second down and seven after Redmond from West Palm, game three. The tight end open, and he dropped the ball. Dan Clark had a first down and more. He owns the biggest gain of this game for Duke, a 19-yard hookup with Pickens. And this one hit him right between the eight and the five. You see Clark, all the home folks in Tampa watching him. There's Baldwin, Breedlove, and Wells, as we've mentioned. Here's the second string. Bunch, Gill, Hall, Holiday, Lewis, and there's a name for people who remember. Steve Spurrier, wide receiver out of Gainesville when his dad left, stayed here, and he's finishing up his career this year as a senior. He's the holder for the uh, kicking specialist, Tom Cochran, also playing wide receiver and a fine young man. I'm sure his dad's watching the season. Incomplete this time. Stanley Dorsey. On the uh, receiving end, and Pickens now has misfired five consecutive passes and has hit just one of his last eight. He's gone cold after being uh, somewhat effective to open this game. John Kruger to kick it away. Corey Sawyer deep. It is a 10-man Seminole rush. Inside is 10. He has time. Sawyer will have a return for 40, a 45, 46 yard line. Keith Gill, an Orlando native, made the stop for Duke. Nice debut for John Kruger. Coach Barry Wilson has to be greatly relieved. The, the kicking situation untested. Tom Cochran, a junior, had never kicked for the varsity. He's yet to kick the uh, specialist. A Kruger here, who handles the punting charge, has come up big. Charlie Ward uh, with Fryer to the near side left, and a pair of receivers to the far side, and an eye set behind him will try and uh, erase the final six minutes of the first half. Sean Jackson, whoa, breaks it clean at the 40. 35-30, a foot race to the end zone. Touchdown, Florida State. 53 yards, Sean Jackson has his first touchdown of the night and the third for the Seminoles. He broke five separate tackles on that run and raced his way through the mud 
to give Florida State a 19 to nothing advantage. Old 22 isolation play with a fullback on the linebacker and the tailback just falling behind a couple of arm tackles and a missed tackle. 53 yards later, as Bentley converts, Florida State up by 20. Bentley tags on the 20th point of this game. Florida State with three big scoring plays. The 32-yard reception by Tamaric Vanover in the first quarter. Derek Brooks with a 32-yard interception return for a score. And now Sean Jackson rushing 53 yards, darting and dashing through the Blue Devils for the TD. Again, as we've talked earlier, when you get Jackson in the open field, it's almost not fair. But look who's staying right with him, Paul. William Floyd, number 44, almost step for step with Sean. They'll, they'll talk about that in tapes uh, Sunday evening or Monday afternoon. Sean Jackson with his third touchdown of the year. He had scored eight last season. Had Jackson as a uh, junior. And it took but one snap. Rashad to scoot on out. A guy from New Orleans, you might say on that play, yes, found it to be the big easy. Absolutely. The 20, 25, 30 yard line for Duke. Goldman, who is exceptional at returning kicks, is finally brought down by Byron Capers. We've mentioned it, but let's reinforce it. Goldman last year, 1992, number two in the country in kickoff returns, a 30.9 yard average. For those of Florida State alumni and fans, wonder why Tamaric Vanover wasn't there. He didn't have enough returns, but Goldman did. 30.9 yard average, finished second in the country. No, no. New tight end, John Farquhar, in the game for Duke, set to the far side. Blue Devils operate out of the eye. Play action for Pickens, who needs a completion in the worst way. Now he's going deep downfield, bobbled around, knocked in complete as he was going all for all the money against double coverage, hunting John Jensen. He threw that ball about 50 yards plus through the air, but there were a pair of defensive backs there, including Clifton Abraham. Abraham doesn't get the press that Corey Sawyer does. Watch the left-hand top of your screen. Watch Abraham close on this ball. Zone coverage, Coe's following, Abraham out to the outside. Watch him close to the ball. Looks just like Leroy Butler going up for the ball, Paul. Unable to hang on that time, but that was the trait that Butler had, Dion before him, closing on the ball once it's in the air. Pickens now, six straight incompletions. He sets up a screen, make it seven. Trailing 20 to nothing, and it's third and ten. Slipping, sliding, firing, and that was almost another touchdown. In and out of the awaiting arms of Mac Knight. And uh, Joe Pickens is now far from sharp. Eight consecutive incompletions and he's nearly thrown two touchdown passes to Florida State. Well, it's easy to spot it up here, but again, Mac Knight going to be breaking. You're not quite sure who Pickens is trying to get the ball to. He stumbles as he rolls out. That just kind of throws everything off. Gets hit as he releases and again, sports fans that Mac Knight held on to that. Uh, we'd be kicking an extra point right now. Sire can do nothing but watch it bound out of bounds with four and a half minutes to go. So Duke took less than a minute and a half off the clock with that possession. And Florida State in this fast break offense has ample opportunity to break this game even further wide open. One That's thing correct I think, English, but uh, they, they have an opportunity to put their fourth touchdown on the board. One thing Duke, I think, needs to do the next time they get the football is try to establish something on first down. Their last two or three series, they've thrown incomplete passes on first down. Second and ten is not a position you want to be in when you're backed up on a wet field. Ward play action. Uh, he's smelling the opportunity to score. And he has a first down 
to midfield. And Kaz McCorvey, who had a huge game against Duke last year in Tallahassee, when he scored three separate touchdowns. Here is McCorvey with the reception tonight, which is but his first of this game. You see his numbers against Kansas last week. 420 in counting as the Noel shift. Jackson down to the 45 yard line. And we wind under four minutes to go. It'll be second down and five. We've seen what Jackson's done, especially on that 54-yard gallop. Let's go back to some people that are getting a little tired right now but still staying after that offensive front. In this kind of weather, Paul, those defensive and offensive linemen get extremely tired because you have to work that much harder to keep your footing. T. Edwards into the game and an additional defensive back for the Dukes, Blue Devils, and a William Floyd. Hammers are nonetheless inside the 35 down to uh, the 30-yard line. Floyd on the game there. Picking up the first down of about 12 yards. Watch the hole here on the right side. Everybody steps right and he just slides right back to him and to our left as we look. You just got to like the William Floyds of the world, Paul. Every day of practice, every day on the game day, he's always after it. Ward pulls it down, now fires. It is caught at the 15. Stripped from a tackle, down to the 11-yard line. Kevin Knox has a first down for the Knowles once again. John Zuanich made the stop. Knox, the second leading receiver last year with those 35 receptions. Don't let that average fool you, 11.3. They throw the ball to Knox a lot underneath, and... He catches the ball two or three yards past the line of scrimmage and makes that other eight mostly on his own. Charlie Ward with nine completions in the first half for 133 yards and one touchdown. Will operate from the shotgun. Rolls left, tucks it, runs it. Ward for the end zone, standing up. Charlie Ward races into the end zone. And Florida State's lead indeed balloons to 26 to nothing. And Florida State was moving left to right or north to south. We saw Ward elude a tackler for a first down. That time from 12 yards out, you see the magic in, that, in those feet. You wonder sometimes, Paul, how he does it. How does his mind and his feet work together in order to make that happen? It's unbelievable. Bentley has it blocked. They can score. And pick up a point. They don't hear for Bentley. Makes the tackle. Ray Farmer blocked it. The man who scooped it up was Brad Shirai. Another kicker who had it blocked. Give him credit in Bentley. Who played a little defensive back in high school. Made the tackle. Here's a Charlie Ward on his scramble. His scamper for six. Looks right. Works back to the left. There's a juke. And then just sidesteps everybody right there. It looks too easy. It's like he's looking back. Where are you guys? A lot of times that uh, things go bad, they go bad in bunches. Bentley misses one and then right up the middle is blocked. Remember the rule change a couple of years ago, the defending team on an extra point can run it back for a single point. Again, Florida State not needing a lot of time, a million fifty to run those, go those 62 yards. You feel somewhat uh, for Duke and uh, Barry Wilson here in that uh, perhaps their offensive game plan was to throw the ball and the torrential showers have taken that away from them. But not being able to utilize their passing game, they have been three and out quite quickly to Florida State and the Knowles have simply turned right around with the time allotted to them on the clock and scored a couple of touchdowns here late in the first half and have blown this thing wide open. It was just a 7 to nothing game at the end of our first period, and uh, Duke was hanging right in there. Bentley, the Goldman, and here we go. Nice return. Across the 30, up to the 32-yard uh, line, and Byron Capers makes his third tackle tonight on special teams. He's hustling around this 
Byron Capers guy, one of the more highly touted defensive back prospects coming out of high school from Marietta, Marietta Georgia. Georgia. Playing special teams and playing it well. Absolutely. Mickey Andrews early on when he lost Gilmer, he lost Corey Fuller, making the decision to go ahead and play the freshman not only on special teams but in the regular defense and nickel schemes as well. And Capers proven himself worthy of that task, especially on special teams. Capers remains in the game along with James Colsey, the two reserve quarters for Florida State. And it's a first down, or rather a completed pass to John Jensen. And that ends a run of eight in a row in which Pickens had failed to connect. Now, so Jensen to uh, Pickens, or Pickens to Jensen, at second down and three. Duke now going again with its no huddle offense. Pickens over the middle, caught for a first down and immediately dropped Tishan Redmond. Stopped on the play by Eric Smith, the outside linebacker, number 43. And the Florida State situationally substituting here is Mickey Andrews, loves to do the defensive coordinator, plays a lot of man-to-man -man attacking pressure. A lot of people played, especially on the defensive side of the ball. You see Mickey there on the right-hand side of your screen, including eight freshmen on both sides of the ball against Kansas. Two minutes to go in the first half. Almost intercepted. Flying over the intended receiver was Richard Coates, who came this close to picking uh, the pass that was intended for Bill Kay. Coates starting in the position vacated to, due to the injury to Steve Gilmer. Excellent read of the quarterback. Saw the quick setup, knew right where he was going, and came over the back without interfering and almost picked it off. Second and ten. From the gun. Pickens picks out a target. And it's incomplete. Unable to hold on Kayat again. Sliding on a wet night. So it's throw, throw, throw here on uh, every down for Duke. Again, Duke not being successful on first down. We'll keep coming back to that. Second and ten on the last three series. He's just going to put you in a hole against this Florida State defense that many more times than not, Paul, you're not going to get out of. Pickens, six for 19 in the first half for 53 yards, but just two for his last 10 passing attempts. And on third and 10. Underneath, back it away. Incomplete. Getting a right hand up there was Ken Alexander, the senior linebacker, who filled the lane, knocked it away, and it's... With 144 remaining, time for Duke to punt again and ample time for Florida State to score again. When you continue to throw the football as uh, Buddy Geis, the offensive coordinator, and Barry Wilson, the head coach, are doing for Duke, it's a two-edged sword. Well, that's a fake here. Throwing Kruger, and he overshoots his intended receiver. As he was hunting David Hawkins on the fake punt. Kruger, a quarterback in high school as well as the punter. As we've mentioned, 17 years old. I think he turns 18 sometime later this month. Flag down, ineligible receiver. Here's a look at it. You'll see Hawkins wide open. Kruger just overthrows him. And Florida State obviously will decline the penalty. So Kruger is firing, asking a lot of the uh, freshman kicker to do that. You'd have to question that call again. They are not playing as Duke with any type of conservative approach to this game. And they are surrendering now touchdowns, rather frequent fashion. Watch Florida State throw the ball deep. See if they do here. A run, a fake reverse. On the toss and drop for a two-yard loss. Good defense there, Marquette Smith. Well defended by Duke. As the Devils did not buy in whatsoever to the reverse. John Zuanic, hard-nosed strong safety, made this stop. 115 remaining. Zuanic, very hard-nosed and very large at the strong safety position. 6'2", 2'10", 215. What did you play at? Uh, Strong one, safety. 172. Good deal of difference. <laughs> the game, it has changed. William Floyd, 
falls on the football. And now it is timeout, Florida State. That timeout might be uh, in response to the fake punt with Florida State leading 26 to nothing. Florida State faking the reverse and then going right up the gut. On the plus 40. Got about a minute left to go here. 90, minute four, I think. Coach Bowden and staff. You know, we had, a, we had an opportunity to visit with, with Coach this morning right before breakfast, standing outside by the pool, very relaxed. He's really gotten into enjoying his coaching. Paul, he's, he's left so many assignments over to his assistants. He's still very actively involved, but he's allowing them to do their thing with uh, Coach Rick and Brad Scott able to call the plays for the most part. Charlie and company now with about a third and nine. Needing to convert to maintain his drive. Ward throws and uh, within a yard of the first down marker. Matt Fryer on the receiving end. Close and enough to time measure. out taken to measure. Florida State has uh, every intention of punching this ball back into the end zone, even though it leads by four touchdowns. You know, you mentioned Jim Hewitt down in Orlando, Paul, Florida State, enjoying a tremendous amount of fan following in the Orlando area, a huge Jacksonville Seminole Booster group. Of course, what goes on in Leon and Tallahassee is Leon County and Tallahassee, but on the Bowden Tour this year in the spring, places like uh, Carolina, Washington, D.C., Los Angeles, Dallas, the following she ever grows. It is a first down for FSU and out of the shotgun. The time remaining, Ward will go to work. Throwing underneath, and he banged it off of the shoe tops, and it's incomplete. Nearly intercepted. Kez McCormie had a ricochet. We'll want to try to get place. another. Yeah, we'll try to get another look at this. James Kirkland there thought he had an interception. James is arguing quite vehemently. Let's see if we can watch it. Direct your attention to the ground. You know the way that ball came up. Looks like an interception. Looks to me. like an interception from here. But the far lines judge right on top of it, immediately singling incomplete. Kirkland, I guarantee, is is saying, "I know." I caught that ball. I saw it. I saw it clean. It was right there. 25 seconds remaining. Charlie. Slanting. Caught. Great catch. 12-yard line. FSU and Kaz McCorvey. What a receiving core. And McCorvey and Vanover. Fryer and Knox. And the Knolls are hustling. And timeout taken with 15 seconds remaining. Timeout FSU. Watch you know, this catch one more time. Be coming right at you, working left to right. Watch the extension and the concentration. There's the ball. There's the player. There's the catch. McCorvey, number three on the team last year in receptions, 34 catches. Real nice average at 15.3. Coach Bowden and staff very high on Fryer, McCorvey, Knox, and Vanover. And I think, as we've mentioned earlier, Paul, eight receivers dressed for the contest tonight, and don't be surprised if uh, seven or all eight of them don't get an opportunity to catch the football. Coach John Eason there, the receiver coach there on the left, as you look, Dr. Eason. Very proud of this group of receivers, always trying to outlive the shadow of the Fab Four, if for no other reason, trying to come up with a better name for themselves. Ward now, off that 20-yard hookup, is thrown for 162 yards in the first half. And he has hit a total of five different receivers in doing so. On first down, with a man in motion, Ward throws it out here to Marquette Smith. Smith did not get out of bounds at the three-yard line. The clock runs. Florida State has now taken its third and final timeout with three ticks of the clock remaining prior to intermission. A little indecisiveness or a little indecision allowed about six or seven 
ticks to leave. Watch Marquette come in motion to the left, bottom of the screen. What they're trying to do here, Paul, is just get Smith isolated outside. And what they also want Smith to do is get out of bounds. And you can very clearly see there that he's down on about the three-yard line. Watch it come right at you. Ward takes a little bit of a hit. Now, Marquette's got to learn to get out of bounds and save those timeouts when he gets to the sideline. It was a gain of eight, which will set up this, uh, this period-ending field goal try by Bentley from 20 yards away, just like a uh, extra point, but it comes at a pretty tough angle for it. This is intended to be a confidence builder, Paul. What Coach Bowden is doing right here is giving Bentley a chance, a little bit of a chance to redeem himself from that blocked extra point and missed field goal earlier. He's missed once. How about from 20 here? This time, no. He splits the uprights. And the half has come to an end. 29 to nothing. Your score at intermission as Bentley caps the drive for Florida State, which has scored five separate times in the first two periods as it opens its defense of its Atlantic Coast Conference Championship. Atlantic Coast Conference lid lifter, second week of the season. The Knowles arriving at the 1-0 and opening Duke's season here in Durham. 29 to nothing, your score. Let's take a look at the uh, highlights of the first two quarters of action, and we begin with a simple touchdown. How fitting is this? Charlie Ward to Tamarik Vanover. We didn't think either of the teams would be successful throwing the ball as wet as it is, but pitchers uh, are worth a thousand words and also make lies out of broadcasters. Vanover on a slant pattern, a deep slant, post route. Ward hitting him. The defense came right back. Derek Brooks, excellent, excellent upfield movement. Gets by offensive tackle. Sacks Pickens. And here uh, he'll have an interception to tack on to it. His first career touchdown for Derek Brooks. Shows that great speed that Coach Gladden and defensive coordinator Mickey Andrews talked about. Sneaks it right on into the end zone. And as we mentioned, while it happened, kind of at home on that track maybe as well. That touchdown made the score at the time 13 to nothing. And here would come Sean Jackson on a 53-yard scamper. One play on this possession total for FSU, and Jackson was long gone. Absolutely. Isolation action. William Floyd gets a block and then gets downfield to help out. Kind of an escort. Jackson from 54 yards out. Charlie, not to be outdone, drops back and a little bit of his wizardry. Watch him tuck that ball under, and he eludes a couple of people. You don't get a good look at it from this angle, but there's one, and he just completely sidesteps another tackle. Get used to that scene. You know, you're going to see quite a few times Absolutely. this year. Absolutely. I'll look at the numbers here, and in terms of total yardage, my, oh, my. 344 yards for Florida State. And Duke, it has not been a... Uh, very auspicious debut for Buddy Geis as the offensive coordinator, but the uh, top-ranked Knowles have a great do deal to do with that. Uh, Duke held only 53 yards in the first half, and remember, all on the, absolutely, all through the uh, air. Remember last year, Duke had 324 yards of total offense. Look at the time of possession. One would have thought the game might be a little bit different if not for the disparity between total yards with the consistency and time of possession. Duke set to kick off to Florida State. And to handle the uh, kicking chores will be young Tom Cochran. Florida State with a uh, pair of men uh, set to return. And it's tandem this evening. Set to handle those chores to Mark Vanover. We're expecting to see Warwick Dunn back there. And that is uh, the young freshman running back and Dunn in tandem. With Vanover. Warwick Dunn is uh, still another member of uh, Florida State's remarkable recruiting class, ranked the best in all the nation. Wears number 28 on his back, and he's set to field this kickoff by Cochran. It's chopped up short, will be taken by an up man in fire and fire high steps and spins across the 30 out to the 33. The sure hands of Matt Fryer, a little frustrated perhaps that he couldn't do more with it. John Zuanish, defensive back on special teams, made the stop. 
Matt Fryer, I think, is one of those guys, Keith. Uh, I want to be conservative on this, but his career perhaps has been played as solid as it has been in the shadows of more flashy talent. He is uh, very solid, very stable, makes the tough catch. The senior, the three-year letterman who turned 23 years old just Thursday. So a happy birthday to him. If you follow Florida State Athletics, it will remind you a lot of a, of a guy that played four five solid years at Florida State during my time named Kurt Unglop. Sean Jackson sporting a dry and clean game jersey in Boston today. Ward to the sideline with his feet in. That is a completion and a first down for Kevin Knox. Underneath and in and out of the hands of Matt Fryer. Right at his helmet. Second down and 10. And here is Jackson across midfield and down to the 47-yard line. Jackson, who rushed for 105 yards in the first half. You're getting a good idea of how much this field is uh, going to be in need of some grounds care. That was a brand new spank and white jersey on number 35, Sean Jackson, there about five plays ago. Picks up five here, 110 yards on the night for Jackson. Quickly releasing, caught McCorvey. McCorvey to the 39-yard line and a first down, and Ward did a magnificent job of getting the ball away, releasing it quickly. In fact, through the pass before McCorvey had turned to receive the ball. Duke in a stunt. John Zanich blitzing from the right-hand side, and Ward stood right in there and delivered that ball before the break. Knox along with Vanover to the near side. Pair of receivers to the far side, long side back in Jackson. Throwing on first down from the gun. Drop. In and out of the hands of Vanover, who took his eyes off of it. That was right on the money by Charlie Ward. You can't fault him on that one. Lack of concentration to Mark, hoping that uh, Coach John Eason doesn't send anybody in to replace him right now because he doesn't want to hear what, what Dr. Eason has to say when he gets to the sideline. Second down and 10. Jackson breaks in motion to the far side. And underneath, the pass caught by McCorvey. Hook it up. Inside the 35, down to the 33. The Knoll scored 48 points against Duke last year. On average, more than uh, 61 in the last three, four weeks of the season. And they exploded toward the finish line and are rolling again now. Once Charlie and company got in sync uh, along about the Georgia Tech ball game, things seemed to fall in place. Even with a slow start, this offense last year, 461 yards on average, as you mentioned, 38 points a game. Need a pair here to hold on to the football. On third and two, Jackson hit the backfield. The flag goes down. And Brad Sherrod, the linebacker, who read it perfectly, has dropped Jackson for the loss. Nice play by Brad Sherrod for Duke. Sherrod, one of the all-time leaders in tackles for loss, had 17 coming into the night's contest. Season opener, you see him shoot the gap right there. Jackson unable to get away from him. Interesting call now, holding against Florida State. They stopped him on third down, as you see the Monroe, North Carolina native. Do you take the penalty or do you take the play? I would uh, take the play myself. You don't want to get Charlie Ward. I mean, what's, you want him to be fourth and five or do you want him to be third and 12? I would decline it if I'm Duke. Now here's another interesting call for Florida State. 35 yard line. You're gonna counter with Liss in the punt unit. This will be about a 53-yard field goal try by Bentley, but uh, on the wet footing tonight, it is Sean Liss to attempt to pooch it. Into the corner. Oh, snap. He just did get it away. And in his haste after the poor snap, does manage to kill it inside the five. 
and Derek Brooks is everywhere this evening. He's the man that downed it at the five-yard line. Brooks had thoughts about catching it in the air. Breedlove had singled for the fair catch, but was up around the 10-yard line. 29 on the punt, 29 on the scoreboard. A new quarterback for Duke as they open the second half, Spence Fisher. And on the toss sweep, David Lohman. Out across the five and up to the seven, eight yard line. There you see Fisher. He was the starter last year against Florida State. You see his 92 numbers in the opener last year against FSU. He's 11 of 20 for 179 of those 1,505 yards. Threw two touchdowns in that contest. He's out of Atlanta, Georgia, came into the preseason as the number one quarterback and was actually beaten out by Pickens in preseason. But now here starting the second half. Play action. Hanson Zip on the ball, and he finds Dan Clark, the Tampa native. And the tight end earns the first down of the 22-yard line. That's been open all night long. Florida State concentrating on the wide outs of Duke, leaving that middle wide open. Devin Bush almost in man-to-man -man coverage with Clark. A little bit of a mismatch, and Duke has gone to it three or four times, converts some here and there for the first down. Fisher's predecessor and Joe Pickens, his debut tonight, the transfer from Ohio State. He completed six of 21 attempts, was picked off once, returned for a score by uh, Derek Bush. Total of 53 yards, the only offense mustered by Duke in the first two quarters. Swinging it out of the backfield. Good move, Loman. Loman up close to the 30-yard line. So Spence has sparked something here, perhaps, and Duke coming off its own goal line. Notice the difference, too, on both of the first down plays. Duke going with something that'll get them five or six or seven yards. That time, a little swing pass to Loman out of Monterey, Georgia. You've got to get four or five yards on first down and setting up that second and five or six if you're going to be successful against an attacking defense like Florida State. Great love and Dorsey. Two of the three receivers in this game, and a uh, third man split out to the far side as the inside handoff on a very slippery field is cradled by Robert Baldwin. Works his way about a yard shy of the first down markers. He totes it across the 30. And remember in the backyard when you used to play in the rain and get all that mud out there? Well, that's what it's like right now. It's not a lot of technique. Just push him around. You got big guys for Florida State. Marion, Nance, and Alexander, all 260 or better. And a bunch of 280-pound seniors for the Blue Devils trying to push him back. In the yard, about a yard and a half. And Fisher calls the play at the line of scrimmage. He's going to try and throw for it, and it's broken up incomplete. What a play by Clifton Abraham. One of the best defensive backs in the game, and they threw his way, and it's incomplete. We mentioned it earlier. Again, Sawyer on the other side. The field corner gets all of the publicity. The boundary corner, Abraham, probably as gifted an athlete as any of his predecessors and predecessors in Florida State lore. Had a block kick against Can or TD uh, for, against Kansas on a kick that was blocked by Lonnie Johnson. That time comes up, makes a great play on a deflection. Duke managing but one conversion on third down in this game. Low line drive punt. Here comes Sawyer. He lost the ball. Duke has it. And Duke loses the ball. And the Seminoles recover. Back near the five. Still on his feet. Bounding around and swarmed under for the Knowles is Philip Riley. What a wacky play that was. Or check it, it was it, Riley. Is that Richard Coase? Coase. Richard Coase recovers it for Florida State. So you're trying to decoy and then get a good running start on that play. The wall was set nicely to the top of the field. Just a little bit late getting to the ball. Duke very alertly picks it up and then turns it right back over themselves. You see Coase walking off going, wait a minute, man, I was supposed to be blocking. How did I end up with this pick skin? Timeout taken by the officials, and they are going to rule that Duke University recovered the football at the 25-yard line of Florida State. Is that not, they were down. Is that not the rule where you cannot advance a fumble punt? The defensive team cannot advance the fumble punt? That has to be it, and you're right. 
And when he came into possession, he was down. Let's see where the possession is. We'll compare that versus where they mark it. There you see the fumble. It's right on the 25-yard line. Number 21 for Florida State. James Colsey kind of knocks it out. Coase picks it up. But they're going to rule the ball dead at the 25-yard line at that initial recovery. Tijon Redman, Redman picked it up for Duke. Again, Sawyer trying to decoy. Watch him. He's decoying, and he wants to get a running start and just doesn't get there quick enough. Dijon, number three, is ruled to have picked it up there, and they'll have it first and ten. Fisher throws, and this is picked up. We're going the other way. Florida State in cause. Finally comes up with it. He didn't get it on the uh, fumbled punt, but he does this time on the interception. And there are tempers flaring in front of the Florida State sideline, and a flag has been thrown. Trying to hit the fade. Strong safety, free safety rather, in a protect technique, if you will. Just slides over, trying to throw it in the boundary. What happens here is Coase gets out of bound. Nobody hears the whistle. A lot more of hitting's going up on around the 20, 25, 30-yard line. Coase says, I'm tired, man. I had the pigskin last time. You wouldn't let me keep it. Let me get this one and just get out of bounds. So the Knolls with their second interception of this game defensively. After picking off the Jayhawks three times in the Meadowlands last weekend. Duke trying to convert quickly on that turnover. And here's the penalty, too. Personal foul against Duke. First down. We'll spot the ball across the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. See Mickey Andrews talking to his crew there. The turnover comparison, Florida State with the two interceptions. Duke with the botched punt return. Marquette Smith, the new tailback for Florida State. And he'll tuck it and sweep the right side. Out to the 31, the 32-yard line. Marquette Smith for Florida State. And you can see that the, uh, the Knolls are beginning to substitute a bit. They'll pull the uh, tight end and Lonnie Johnson, along with the fullback and William Floyd, and go with a four-wide out set. Vanover, McCorvey. Fryer and Knox. And a lone back in Smith for Ward on second down following the gain of four. Leading 29 to nothing midway through the third quarter. Four wide outs and a running back and Ward having spread the field takes off. For three. You know, we haven't even talked about it in the Kansas ball game and now through two quarters, two and a half quarters here against Duke. Let's not forget that Charlie Ward had surgery on that left shoulder in the offseason. Remember, he injured it during basketball season, did not participate extensively in spring drills. No ill effects, hasn't even talked about it much. And we've spent uh, all the better half of the telecast, and we haven't even mentioned it. The man who owns the single season and single game total offense records at Florida State. Charlie Ward doing it through the air tonight and on the ground. He's rushed five times for 41 yards and scored a touchdown. And through the air, close to 200 yards. Marquette Smith uh, with the first half. Sherrard, the linebacker, knocked down little Marquette, who is seeing extensive uh, action uh, now, not only in the Kansas game, but here tonight against Duke. This is his sixth carry, Keith. And uh, good to see Marquette after voluntarily taking the redshirt year last season become an integral part of the Noel offense. Parade Magazine's Offensive Player of the Year. Derek Brooks, the Defensive Player of the Year, part of that 91 recruiting class of Florida State. And playing a bunch at this season's outset. The play clock winding down as Ward appears to change the play and give it to Marquette. And Marquette stumbled forward for four. There was a hole there, and uh, he lost his footing. Whether he tripped over a running back, I think he's saying it's my fault. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, on that? In a, in, on those hash marks there, even though they've been moved in six or seven feet, where the ball is snapped uh, in between the 20s, you're going to get a lot of torn up turf, and Marquette kind of just tripped over himself. Pay special note to what's going on in the offensive line. That very young Florida State offensive line against a very seasoned veteran Duke defensive line. You get a good look at it right there, and, folks, it's nasty down there, let me tell you. Clay Scheiber, the center over the football for the Seminoles. Looks back. Fires it to Ward and tosses to Fryer. That's a first down. It's Matt 
battles his way into Duke territory. Charlie Ward now over 200 yards in passing. It was about midway through last season when the Seminole staff decided to start using the shotgun from the get-go, and it has certainly altered Florida State's attack. It made it so, so effective. See Fryer fighting for extra yardage, stepping out of bounds. You know, Fryer graduated in the, in the summer, Paul. Degree in business communications, now a graduate student this term at Florida State, much like Charlie Ward. A gain of 10 on the play, 205 yards for Ward and Lil Marquette Smith. Through a tackle inside the 45 to the 44. Number one offensive line is still out there. You see Clay Shiver, number 53, the center. Saw Warren Scoble made the stop. It's all Clay's mom and dad at the hotel. Miss Nancy, they came up. Bobby Bowden says that Clay Shiver is as good a center as there is in college football. And uh, a, a, uh, the second Shiver to play at uh, Florida State, Stan, of course. In fact, Coach Bowden finds himself calling him Stan on occasion. His older brother was a was one tough hombre at strong safety for Florida State. Underneath, Fryer gets the corner turn. Clip. A clip, though, is what freed him. And Tamarik Vanover is the man who clipped the free fryer, and a flag immediately went down. If you're going to have any knocks on Tamarik, it's going to be his age and doing something stupid. You see Charlie there probably talking to him. Yeah, talking right to Tamarik. Don't be silly. On the offense. You just can't make those kind of mistakes. Vanover into his second game of his sophomore year. Watch the right-hand side of your screen. Fryer's going to work all the way across. Tamarik's going to work right to left. Boom, right there. That's what brought the flag. That erases what would have been a 17-yard gain for Florida State. You can see the leadership of Charlie Ward. He's going, he went immediately to Tamarck and pointed that out to him. It's those intangible little things that Ward gives this team that uh, don't go down on a stat sheet anywhere but are going to make a big difference as the season goes along. The fourth penalty tonight whistled against Florida State. 525 remaining in the third quarter. 29 to nothing. Florida State leading Duke in Durham. Ward. Oh, what a catch for nine. Diving Kaz McCorby. Make that Wayne Massum rather than McCorby. A young freshman from Belgrade, Florida, with his first catch of the evening. And it was a dandy laid out for the football. Much like McCorby, number 88, Messam number 89. Doing an excellent job. How about Ward's patience in the pocket? How about that offensive line staying with him? They know Charlie will stay back there and be mobile. They just keep getting in front of people and giving him time. The seventh different receiver to catch a pass from Ward in this game. Third down, now first down. And a hammer down is McCorvey this time. John Zonich on the stop. Big crunch of a tackle. When when Zuanich hits you, you can hear it all the way up here in the press box. The 210-pound uh, strong safety who we've talked about throughout this game. But that is a, a gain on the play of 17 yards. As you mentioned, Zuanich brings a load with him. He's 6'2 in the frame, 210. Make that six yards rather than 17, pardon me. Ward with 240 yards to the air. Oh, my. More. Inside the 15 to the 13-yard line, first down FSU. McCorvey again, right between the hashes and in front of Ray Farmer, the free safety. One of the problems Charlie Ward had in the beginning of the 92 campaign was throwing to the wrong person or trying to force something. I think you've seen 365 days of difference. Watch Ward wait patiently for this to break and then deliver the ball perfectly making the right read, throwing to the right area. 29 to nothing, perhaps fixing the chain. Fryer, good move back to the center of the field, and inside the five to the three. Florida State. Florida State's offense right now, Keith, uh, cannot be contained by the secondary of Duke. Just putting on a clinic. This is the way you throw the football in wet conditions. There you see Ward's number approaching 300. We're about halfway here through the second, excuse me, third quarter. We see John Stark after this drive. I would think this would probably about do it. 
Charlie. Pat in motion, Marquette Smith. Ward, touchdown, Florida State. Firing, and it's caught by Kaz McCarvey. Ward with his second touchdown strike of the night, and Florida State owns its fifth touchdown of the game. Again, the added dimension that Ward brings to you just by being mobile, a broken route, McCorvey adjusting back to Charlie Ward. Very successful in converting it. The pressure that a mobile quarterback puts on a defense, especially down around the goal line, is just tremendous, Paul. Evidenced by that touchdown throw. Scott Bentley. Had his troubles in the first half kicking the football on this wet field. Tries to add the extra point. And he does. 36 to nothing. Florida State dominating Duke. Charlie Ward out of the shotgun, producing another FSU score. Keith? The design play didn't happen. This is improv improvisation. Can't get that big word out. He's looking back to his left or right, and then he rolls. Watch McCorvey just get in sync with him. And they convert it from inside the 10 very easily. Zaid Abdul Alim was uh, the uh, Blue Devil who hit him after the uh, touchdown. 11 plays, 72 yards. Probably the longest drive that you'll see Florida State have. A little over five minutes. A three-yard pass to McCorvey converts it. And it started with an interception. Richard Coes picking off. Duke Spence Fisher. Leroy Goldman in tandem set to return. This kick, and he does from the three. 20, 25, 30, 40, 45, 48-yard line. Devin Bush on the stop. It's amazing the way that Goldman continues time after time to return kicks because you know it's coming. Try to pooch the ball away from him. He still gets it. And he manages, despite the best intents of the defensive team, to return it 30, 40 yards. His return that time of 45. Get our first look as you see the shot there, J.D. Lewis at fullback. A lot of that has to do with their blocking schemes, too, Paul. We'll talk about that later. Ball on the ground. Lewis fumbled it. Florida State picks it up. And the man who fell on it, Todrick McIntosh. The senior left end from Richardson, Texas. Florida State earning its third turnover of this game, leading as it is, 36 to nothing. John Stark on his first play at quarterback hands the ball on the end around and for Florida State. That's Omar Ellison sweeping the far side across midfield and once again into Duke territory. And from here on in, my friends, there will be all sorts of a new faces for Florida State as they will play everybody. There is Ellison there. Andre Cooper, another wide receiver, joining John Starks, receiving core, the redshirt sophomore from Nashville, Tennessee. Replacing Charlie Ward, who more than likely is a done for the night. Speaking of Dunn, Warwick Dunn is the tailback. The give on the inside handoff is to Clarence Williams. And Pooh Bear is at the 15, the 10, the 5. Touchdown! Two plays after the fumble recovery. Clarence Williams, the true freshman, the 18-year-old fullback, from Crescent City, Florida, has scored his very first touchdown in his FSU career. You know, the thing that's so interesting about uh, Pooh Bear is his size, his height, and his weight. But they say at 250 pounds, he probably still has as quick a feet as any running back, including the Marquette Smiths and Sean Jacksons, in order to cut once he's in traffic. 2.32 remaining third quarter as Bentley misses the extra point. Two have been blocked, or one has been blocked. He's missed two and also misfired on a field goal. Got a bad hold, I think, out of that one. Very poor snap, difficult hold. Florida State's kicking woes continue. If this keeps up, 
The marching Chiefs will be exhausted before the ball game's done. Here you have a look at it coming right at you. He runs through a tackle there. This is 250 pounds, folks. Watch him change the ball. Watch him wait for people downfield. Watch him motor in the open field. And then he'll get into it. Watch him mug for the camera. There's a very frustrated young man right there. As we've talked about earlier, front cover of Sports Illustrated, very highly touted Florida State in a recruiting war with Lou Holtz and the Notre Dame folks. Scott's dad, a graduate of Notre Dame, picked Florida State because he just felt more comfortable, felt like people accepted him more as a football player as opposed to just a kicker. Sports Illustrated did a wonderful job of uh, documenting that story. And his recruiting. 42 to nothing here. Florida State scored 48 against these guys last year. Bentley kicking. What's Coleman going to do? 45 on the last return. To the 20, 25, 30, 35, 36, 37 yard line. Again, a lot of that is Goldman's effort. A lot of that is execution by the other 10 with some very intricate return schemes. Take a look at Florida State's quick scoring drive, 46 seconds, two plays, that 47-yard Pooh Bear run to finish it off. That bottom line is going to be the one Chiron line that uh, Florida State coaches are going to hate seeing. Spence Fisher returns at quarterback for Duke. Sets up the screen. Baldwin. To the 43-yard line. That is for Fisher his third completion of this game, a gain of eight. Samuel Cowart for Florida State, number 56, another one of those freshmen out of Jacksonville, also in on the tackle. Mac Knight coming up from his strong safety position to help. Again, Duke successful on first down, getting six, seven, in this case eight yards, making second down that much easier. From the eye set, play action. Fisher throws, tough catch right on the midfield stripe made by a leaping Dan Clay. That's a first down, the senior three-year letterman. Made a tough catch there for the Blue Devils. Number two on the squad last year, as we've mentioned, with 30 catches, four of those going for touchdown. Dropped one earlier in the first half, but has converted on all other balls thrown his way. And that time, a very, very nice grab. For Duke, a rare moment in this game. Converting. Against a four-man front. Fisher throws. Another completion. Inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. To Baldwin. And he made it with a defender right, draped on his back. Baldwin, very agile coming out of the backfield, had 23 receptions last year. Baldwin, the number two rusher behind Randy Culper, as we talked about. A crowd that we would estimate in excess of a 25,000 fans turning out this evening for Florida State's first ever trip into historic Wallace Wade Stadium. And the Knowles dominating this one with less than a minute to go in the third. As Fisher goes deep, and Fisher suffers the turnover. The interception at the 15-yard line by Corey Sawyer. Sawyer with the third INT tonight recorded by FSU. And Sawyer, the boundary side corner. It's called Velociraptors. You know, out of Jurassic Park, the Velociraptor quarterbacks. He was right there to devour the football. Once again, he holds his string. Seven interceptions last year with zero return yardage, despite his great efforts on punt returns. Number two in the country last year with those seven picks. Keeps that going. Number one here in 93, zero interception return yardage. John Stark remaining in the game after Charlie Ward's huge night that saw him throw for 272 yards, two touchdowns, and he ran for one himself. A flag flies as the ball is toted by Warwick Dunn out across the 25 to the 27-yard line. The eye-popping freshman from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. 
had help from a hole. Dunn, the number two rusher last week against Kansas behind Marquette Smith. It carries 68 yards. And you got to like his number. Let's see the interception again. Spence trying to pump fake and Sawyer once again with his famous interception and fall down, but able to wrestle the ball away from Dorsey. Not fooled at all. So we've seen two quarterbacks who have transferred to their current teams. First, of course, Joe Pickens, former Ohio State Buckeye, and now John Stark, who began his college career at Liberty College, Liberty University as it is, before returning home to Tallahassee. Here's Stark. Run out to the 10. After the holding call, at pin the nose back. Second down. That'll be the final play of the third quarter, and this one is three quarters complete. Florida State all but assured of its second consecutive win in as many weeks, leading 42 to nothing. With Keith Jones, I'm Paul Kennedy. Our producer tonight, John Lou, assisted by Jeff DeMoss, our entire Prime Network crew. Great to have you along. Here in Durham, if you are a, a Seminole fan, it doesn't get much better than this. 42 to nothing as you open your defense of last year's Atlantic Coast Conference Championship by a thumping on Duke and doing so on the road. John Stern shifts him into the eye and settles under center. It's Andy Crow now at center. Stern to the boundary and into the Duke sideline incomplete as he was looking for the intended receiver and Andre Cooper from Jacksonville. Cooper, one of the most highly talented receivers coming to Florida State out of high school, out of Jacksonville. 6'3", 182 pounds with rockets on his feet. Florida State with an opportunity, as you saw, to pad its number in this department. On third down. Cooper scoots out to the near side. And a flag fly. As the ball is brought out across the 20 by Dunn to the 23. Seems that every time Dunn is cradling the ball, somebody's holding for him. He'll uh, mention that when he gets back to the huddles. We see the here to call here. Ball start. That's going to happen, is it not, Keith? Absolutely. With new people in there. Absolutely. You've got some of the second and some of the third team folks in there. you got Stark in there. People may be wondering as we watch the replay. Watch Dunn low to the ground and able to move. Watch how low his shoulder pads are. He's always scooting, jiving a little bit. Folks may be wondering why Stark is in there in lieu of Danny Cannell. Most of the coaching staff, including Mark Rick, the quarterback coach, feels so confident with Cannell that he doesn't really need the stamps, that snaps. They want to bring Stark along. They know, or they have a known quantity in Danny Cannell, and you really don't want to take a chance of getting out on this wet field and, and having him injured. Let's give Stark a chance to get some reps and play under his belt, because you may need him later on if something were to happen to Charlie or to Danny. A three receiver set, third and very long, and they'll keep it on the ground and gain some yardage. Marquette Smith out across the 20. David Hawkins, the linebacker, on the stop for Duke. Uh, got him some breathing room, obviously, out to the 20 and just five yards shy of the first down. So uh, Sean Luss, easily identifiable, and that, uh, he's the punter with the squeaky white jersey out there. More importantly, the still bright, shiny gold pants. I think the guys that take him and throw him in the mud just to make him feel a part of all of this. Let's watch the snap here. This is a terrible place to be snapping from on the 20 yard line. The man to do so, Andy Crow. Did a nice job. The punt tumbles. Great love. Clip. Two flags down. Three now. Everybody saw it. And the penalty will go against Duke, obviously. Next week, Duke travels to Giants Stadium, Keith, to take on Rutgers and the Knowles, returning home to host Clemson. Walk behind the back. You know, it's been a long time. I don't know the exact season, but it's been a long time since Florida State opened with two road games, the kickoff classic and now here at Duke. 
see the clip there, number 39 for Duke. Jason, Jason Ritz. Ritz. Three little hankies go down. You know, Florida State fans need to get used to seeing Duke in home openers, though, regular season openers. I think they're scheduled at least through 96 and possibly through the year 2000. Visiting with uh, Bob Goyne earlier, he brought that out and made us aware of it. So a little bit of a beginning of the year rivalry. On into the millennium. As they say, it will be Duke and Florida State the outset of the year. Swing pass to Baldwin. Stumbled across the 35 and up ended. Good open field tackle by uh, Sawyer. Fisher just nowhere to go for him, and uh, he's buried about six inches deep in that turf for Florida State. Tyrant Marion being slapped around in congratulatory fashion. As you see, that's pretty much the uh, number one defensive unit out there for Florida State with 12 and a half minutes to play. And that is sack number three registered by the Garnet and Gold Headhunters tonight. And remember also, that is a defensive front that lost four first and second team players as you see the sack again to the NFL draft in the first four rounds, never mind Marvin. So five of the front seven for Florida State drafted. And now these guys filling in. Timeout. Requested by the Duke Blue Devils, and we will step aside as well here in the fourth quarter at Wallace White Stadium. One of the great coaches in the history of college football was, of course, Wallace Wade at both the University of Alabama and at Duke University. Served this school for better than two decades. The stadium named in his honor. And Duke being pushed around a bit by Florida State here. Same Duke squad that uh, scored 21 points against these people. I think I said four folks drafted. Total of five when you throw in Marvin. The Jets, Bears, Browns, Saints, and Redskins. That much better for Mickey Andrews and company's efforts. The pass skipped up. Incomplete to Bill Kayat. And it's fourth down. You see the score, 42 to nothing. Well, in 1942, weeks after Pearl Harbor, was bombed. The Rose Bowl was played here in this stadium. Most of you probably have heard that story. Uh, the threat of perhaps a possible invasion in Pasadena forced the game to be played here. So they were playing the Rose Bowl in this stadium. What, Keith, uh, a decade before Florida State's football program was founded? Right at it. Plus, you got to remember, Duke has played in two, if not three, Rose Bowls. Kruger just did get it away in Florida State. We'll let it pound around. John Stark throwing on a first down. Connects with Lonnie Johnson. The dependable senior tight end. He's been quiet over there tonight. Used primarily for blocking. The number 85. This will be his fourth year as a starter. For Florida State, Keith, and uh, he finally gets to hold on to the ball, too. I think that's the eighth receiver to catch a pass tonight for FSU. I'll make this prediction to you. Johnson will not leave here with 80 catches this season. He'll be drafted in the first three rounds of the NFL draft, though. Very gifted tight end. The ball is fumbled away and apparently recovered by Duke, but there is a flag on the play. Wayne Massa on a crossing route. The wide receiver, the freshman, made the, the uh, catch for FSU, and the ball slipped right out of his grasp when he tried to run with it. So this has gotten sloppy. And that's him making one of those freshman mistakes in a field like this. Once you get the football, you cradle it, you grab it, you hug it, you keep it to your body. He appeared to either trying to be changing hands or maybe just a little lack of concentration. Let's watch it. Another crossing route. You see him catch it and then just throws it right away from himself. A freshman mistake, something that uh, once you get seasoned and you know your playing conditions, you don't try to be too cute. Florida State has its first straight defense on the field still, and there's a great reason for that. With 11 and a half minutes to go, if you're a Seminole fan, here is Baldwin. To the 40, to the 35. That defensive unit is quite aware of the fact that it is pitching a shutout. And now Duke begins to threaten. Baldwin on the game there of 14 yards. 
A year ago, Florida State did not record a shutout. It is obvious that the defense wants one here tonight. Florida State's defense in 1992 gave up 15.6 points per game. That was something that Mickey Andrews was not totally pleased with. As you get a look at the total yardage there, Duke with about 123. But the points are what matters, and that's what the defense is concentrating on right now. Good balance at Florida State side of the ball. Batted away. Incomplete. Trying to set up the uh, screen pass. It was Chris Cohort that did so. In terms of shutouts, you have to go all the way back close to 20 games back into the 1991 season to find the last time that the Florida State shut out a foe. That was Western Michigan at home. As you see the deflection there. And prior to that, it was 1988. In a uh, 59 to nothing shellacking of South Carolina in Columbia. FSU registered the big goose egg on the board. And that defense wants one here. They are rare in this era of modern college football. Absolutely. They just don't come like they used to. Knocked down again by that defensive front wall. This time, Derek Alexander. The top newcomer last year for Florida State from Jacksonville Range High School, the 260-pound right in, got both arms up. He's got some big shoes to fill on that front line, and you mentioned some of those guys in Simpson and Footman and Sterling Palmer trying to live up to that tradition. Yeah, but he may be every bit as good once he leaves here, only a sophomore as Simpson or Footman. He certainly has the size. He'll add another 10, 15, 20 pounds in the next year or two with Coach Van Hallinger's weight program. And an impact player as a freshman, he may be an all-star as a junior and a senior. Runs a 4-4. Incomplete. The intended receiver on the play was Steve Spurrier, who's been in there a while, and uh, Steve could not make the catch. Last season, uh, he caught a pass against the Knolls in Tallahassee. There he is. Quality young man concluding his Duke career. Four years involved in this program. And with 11 minutes remaining, four wideouts for Duke on fourth down and 10 yards to go. Trying to put something on the board. Fisher. Here comes the Heath. Fisher scrambles and will come up shy of the first as he's belted down at the 31-yard line by Tyrant Marion. And a tip of the cap to number 86 and Tyrant. What a wonderful name for defensive lineman. And Absolutely. Tyrant has been just that tonight against Barry Wilson. Dave Wilson, as we mentioned, in his fourth year. Barry Wilson. Excuse me, Barry. Keep confusing him with the... Uh, the drummer for the Beach Boys. <laughs> Graduate of Georgia in 1965, was on Vince Dooley's first team there, captain of that squad. John Stark out of the shotgun. The screen. John Stark throwing on a first down, connects with Lonnie Johnson. The dependable senior tight end, he's been quiet over there tonight. Used primarily for blocking. The number 85, this will be his uh, fourth year as a starter for Florida State, Keith. And uh, he finally gets to hold on to the ball, too. I think that's the eighth receiver to catch a pass tonight for FSU. I'll make this prediction to you. Johnson will not leave here with 80 catches this season. He'll be drafted in the first three rounds of the NFL draft, though. Very gifted tight end. The ball is fumbled away and apparently recovered by Duke, but there is a flag on the play. Wayne Messa on a crossing route. The wide receiver, the freshman, made the, the uh, catch for FSU, and the ball slipped right out of his grasp when he tried to run with it. So this has gotten sloppy. That's him making one of those freshman mistakes in a field like this. Once you get the football, you cradle it, you grab it, you hug it, you keep it to your body. He appeared to either trying to be changing hands or maybe just a little lack of concentration. Let's watch it. Another crossing route. You see him catch it and then just throws it right away from himself. 
a freshman mistake, something that uh, once you get seasoned and you know your playing conditions, you don't try to be too cute. Florida State has its first straight defense on the field still, and there's a great reason for that. With 11 and a half minutes to go, if you're a Seminole fan, here's Baldwin. To the 40, to the 35. That defensive unit is quite aware of the fact that it is pitching a shutout. And now Duke begins to threaten Baldwin on the game there of 14 yards. A year ago, Florida State did not record a shutout. It is obvious that the defense wants one here tonight. Florida State's defense in 1992 gave up 15.6 points per game. That was something that Mickey Andrews was not totally pleased with. As you get a look at the total yardage there, Duke with about 123. But the points are what matters, and that's what the defense is concentrating on right now. Good balance at Florida State side of the ball. Batted away. Incomplete. Trying to set up the uh, screen pass. It was Chris Cohort that did so. In terms of shutouts, you have to go all the way back close to 20 games back into the 1991 season to find the last time that the Florida State shut out a foe. That was Western Michigan at home. As you see the deflection there. And prior to that, it was 1988. And a uh, 59 to nothing shellacking of South Carolina in Columbia. FSU registered the big goose egg on the board. And that defense wants one here. They are rare in this era of modern college football. Absolutely. They just don't come like they used to. Knocked down again by that defensive front wall. This time, Derek Alexander. The top newcomer last year for Florida State from Jacksonville Range High School, the 260-pound right end, got both arms up. He's got some big shoes to fill on that front line, and you mentioned some of those guys in Simpson and Footman and Sterling Palmer trying to live up to that tradition. Yeah, but he may be every bit as good once he leaves here, only a sophomore as Simpson or Footman. He certainly has the size. He'll add another 10, 15, 20 pounds in the next year or two with Coach Van Hallinger's weight program. And an impact player as a freshman, he may be an all-star as a junior and a senior. Runs a 4 4 Incomplete. The intended receiver on the play was Steve Spurrier. Who's been in there a while, and uh, Steve could not make the catch. Last season, uh, he caught a pass against the Knolls in Tallahassee. There he is. Quality young man concluding his Duke career. Four years involved in this program. And with 11 minutes, we're ready four wideouts for Duke on fourth down and 10 yards to go. Trying to put something on the board. Fisher. Here comes the Heat. Fisher scrambles and will come up shy of the first as he's belted down at the 31-yard line by Tyrant Marion. And a tip of the cap to number 86 and Tyrant. What a wonderful name for a defensive lineman. And Absolutely. Tyrant has been just that tonight against Barry Wilson. Dave Wilson, as we mentioned, in his fourth year. Barry Wilson. Excuse me, Barry. Keep confusing him with the... Uh, the drummer for the Beach Boys. <laughs> Graduate of Georgia in 1965, was on Vince Dooley's first team there, captain of that squad. John Stark out of the shotgun. The screen. Warwick Dunn. Dunn slips. Dunn. 40. With a block. 30. 20. And he stumbles and goes down. A great block applied, 30 yards upfield. And Dunn, frustrated that he didn't go the distance. Ray Farmer, the last man there, managed to trip him up. That play motoring down right in front of the, the band. They're getting into it. Nothing fancy. A little quick uh, screen out. Dunn does a good job of just following his blockers, missing an arm tackle. Watch the block downfield by Ellison. And then he just trips. A 57-yard game. 
and the trap inside, and the uh, fullback has very little running room in Clarence Williams for FSU. So the Knowles tonight will start enjoying 68 yards of passing, and 272 by Ward have over 360 yards through the air against Duke. And you add to it their ground game. Well over 400 yards of total offense in this game tonight. Second team offensive line in there. Hernandez, Donaldson, Crow, Bates, and Fordham. Trouble on the exchange done. Late handoff will lose yardage. Eight separate receivers, five separate running backs, and both quarterbacks have also scrambled tonight. And a diversified attack by Florida State. It's scored by land, by air, and the defense has done its job too. Less than 10 minutes to go, and it's third down in a dozen yards. Florida State must penetrate the Duke two to get a fresh set of downs. Tennessee in and start. And the tackle on the left side move. And Jesus Hernandez, number 77, the sophomore on the split side, jumped the count. I'll tell you, you know it's muddy down there when the zebras are dirty. That's the eighth penalty tonight I am Florida State, most of which have come in the second half after the issue had been decided. Florida State with a lone touchdown in the first half. That was Vanover. 32 yards into the end zone. The Knowles are attacking now. 22 for Florida State in the second period and 13 in the third. And Clay Shiver has replaced Andy Crow. Florida State's reinserted its top center. All-American candidate. Out of the shotgun here. Had a little trouble on the previous snap. Snaps as well. And they set up the screen. All the way back to the 25, though. He's gone, and he gets to the 10. You know the way they set up that screen? He'd given away about uh, 10 yards. The field position. A gain of about uh, well, less than five yards, I'd say. Hands fourth down. Bentley trotting on to get another opportunity. This time from about 26, 27 yards out. The Seminoles with a chance here to uh, hang a big 4-5 up on the board. Bentley looking for the boot. And he's good from 27 yards away. Bentley with his second field goal of the night. And it's Florida State, 45-0. I don't remember exactly how that happened. But I think he did come to me and ask me, can I, because that back in those days, the freshmen all roomed together. But Warwick came here, he lost his mother, and uh, needed some mature person with him. And I think Chana asked to room with him, you know? And, uh, and they were just like brothers. They were just like brothers. Marching Chiefs celebrating the score you see. Florida State scoring in every quarter. And it's just enjoyed its second field goal by young Scott Bentley. Bobby Bowden cruising toward his second win of the year for the top-ranked team in all the world of college football. Anybody was wondering, because this was some kind of party or sports trivia question, yes, Coach Bowden is 13-4 and four during second games in his career at Florida State, fixing to make it 14-4. By the way, Coach Bowden has coached on two other occasions against Duke, both of them while at West Virginia, both of them losses. He's one and two in his career. Mike McGee, fine athletic director at the University of South Carolina, when he was the head coach here, and uh, Coach Bowden was at West Virginia, he hung one on the Mountaineers. Bentley drives. Call it all the way back inside is a five-yard line. Out to the 10. 15, 20, 25-yard line, and down he goes. Coleman's been something to behold this evening. He has lived up 
Oh, the billet. What a player this young man is. He definitely is an early candidate for our all-opponent team, for those of us who regularly cover FSU. Absolutely. Fisher back in to direct the uh, Blue Demon attack. Connected with number five, Jensen, against Florida State last year for a 60-yard touchdown. On the ground. The clock rolls with seven and a half minutes to play. So for Duke, which uh, didn't, did not really anticipate that it would be able to hang with a Florida State. And we told you at the outset of tonight's broadcast their ambitions of producing a winning year. Recall that the last time they had one, when they shared the ACC championship in 1989, Duke started out one and three. Was hosting Clemson here, given little chance for winning. And pulled off the shocker, beat Danny Ford and the Tigers, went on to a bowl appearance. All-American Bowl finished number 20 in the country that year. Incomplete again at the 30-yard line. Loman out of the backfield, the intended receiver. Connell Spain had put pressure on the quarterback and Fisher. So Bobby Bowden watches with the rest of us. The scoreboard clock and his thoughts begin to uh, turn to the big orange that uh, arrives in Tallahassee next week. And what will be a huge game uh, for both teams, uh, Ken Hatfield and their staff scouting this one. They're hoping to uh, match the effort in uh, 1989 when the Tigers came into uh, Tallahassee and beat the Noel. And as he releases, still caught though upfield by Breedlove. Fisher manages to turn the first, and now they're saying it's incomplete. Breedlove thought he had the catch. A tough night for that fine young man, as dependable a receiver as Duke has had here in its football history. Brad has but one catch for seven yards. Breedlove's. Duke's outstanding receiver last two years in a row was voted on by the coaching staff. Number three on the team last year, as we think we've mentioned, 29 catches. There was a penalty holding against uh, Duke. Florida State will decline it. The punting unit is forced to return, and that means uh, John Kruger will punt this evening for the ninth time in this game. Sawyer, the lone man back. Florida State coming after him. He gets it away and hits it nicely. Sawyer from his 34. A clip. And Sawyer across the 40 and up to uh, the 45-yard line. Todd Rebull will be flagged for the clip. It's the uh, second, if not third, clipping penalty against the Knowles tonight. Most of them have been flagrant. We also have a flag back up on the Duke 38-yard line, which could very easily be defensive holding. A busy evening this evening for Joe Ryder, referee in this ACC crew. And uh, <laughs> again, the, the rain early got to his wireless microphone tonight. Right-hand side. Number 48 on number 95. That's Rebol clipping Curtis Bunch earlier back up the field. It had been a defensive holding on the holdup. Florida State backed up to their own 24-yard line to begin this drive. Six and a half minutes left in the football game. John Stark remains at the helm. When we have a moment, our thanks to Tom Butters, the fine director of athletics at Duke University for his hospitality. And to Mike Craig, the Sports Information Director at Duke. He does an outstanding job. He and his staff have helped us tremendously, and we certainly appreciate it from all of us at Prime Network. And to Bob Goy, the Athletic Director at FSU, for joining us. Wayne Hogan, Donna Turner, from the Sports Information Office at FSU. Marquette Smith, still in the game. You know, you won't be able to tell tonight, especially Florida State folks that haven't seen Wallace Wade Stadium, but under normal dry skies, a very picturesque setting right here on the campus. 
Sports Illustrated a couple of years back voted it the most picturesque small stadium in the country. Horseshoe shape, tucked down in the ground just a little bit, but it's a mog, a bog tonight rather. Uh, what's unfortunate here, I bet the groundskeeper who's ever in charge of the playing surface is in tears. Uh, his beautifully manicured, lush natural carpet that the Knowles worked out on yesterday upon arriving from Tallahassee has been turned into what you see. <laughs> I don't know if she'll recover throughout the rest of the year. Now he'll try, put some grass seed down there. And, but the damage has been done. Absolutely. Gary Wiley has uh, provided us with all of our statistics here this evening. Turning here in Durham. I think you need legal counsel to get through all of this tonight. Been a lot of fun. Bob Carney, our spider player identification. All the jerseys we've run in here, covered with mud as they are, Bob is invaluable. Five minutes in County. Keith, in the six years that you and I and the folks at Prime Network have worked together broadcasting Florida State Seminole football, in the 30-something uh, games that we have done, the Knowles have uh, never lost. And as a former FSU defensive back, I know you're proud of the fact you've kept your streak intact. Absolutely. Absolutely. Either that or we know how to pick them. Our boss, Dave Olmstead at Sunshine. Sean Liss set the punt for the fifth time in this game. His best effort, all have been under 30. His best effort of 39 the last time out. A high snap here and it's blocked. And Duke will score. Well, ball, they end at the one yard line. Had an opportunity to score the block by Sidney Wells, the Florida native. And Duke has an opportunity to avoid the shutout. And that's particularly sweet to Wells from the Sunshine State. He'll leave this game with something. Absolutely. Right up the middle, Duke putting pressure on Liss. They just come through like a sieve. Number 48, Wells in perfect position. Now what he needs to do Two guys peel black and block, and one guy picked the ball up. You can advance, you can advance that block punt. Duke now ready to roll on about the one and a half yard line. Kansas had what, nine shots inside the 10 a week ago. The top defense is out there hoping here to keep Duke out of the end zone. Fisher rolls, throws, and complete. That's one shot. And you would think that Florida State has to hold them here to win the game, the way the defense is exhorting each other to protect this shutout with 4-10 to go. Absolutely. There's a lot of pride, a lot of uh, intestinal type of uh, fortitude. I think we alluded to that earlier in the telecast. Florida State's even going to take a timeout to regroup. It's that important to this defensive squad and this defensive coaching staff. While uh, you look at Fisher, the entire defense has gone over to the sideline to talk to Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator, and Bobby Bowden, too, on the far side of the field. You know, in this day of a lot of attention on the Florida State offense, this Florida State defense a little bit overlooked despite the great players, especially involved last year. As you see the look there, we're going to sidestep just a little bit, and we're going to regroup just like them. Florida State up 45 nothing. 4-10 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Second and goal. Inside the one-yard line for Duke. Fisher brings Jensen a motion. Inside handoff, Lewis, and Duke has scored a touchdown. J.D. Lewis. And with 4.07 to go, as the kicking game breaks down, the defense is frustrated because it loses its shutout. You can't really fault them. The ball turned over so deep in their own territory. But a severe disappointment, especially this first unit. You just don't want to give up those points. Here's Cochran on to attempt the uh, extra point out of uh, Steve Spurrier's hole. The snapper, Patrick Madeline. Good hole, the kick is good. 45 to 7.
In the last seven years, Duke has been shut out in Wallace Wade Stadium on its campus only one time. So they showed us something there, playing with pride. Final minutes of this game, the issue decided, but putting that score on the board that they needed to avoid the, uh, the shutout. Well, when you talk about Duke University, you talk about a basketball program with unbelievable prominence, where you see the scoring drive and the numbers. One of the things that's often overlooked about this university is the pride that its kids have in its athletic department. You know, this is a program in the 30s and 40s and 50s that enjoyed a great deal of success. Spurrier coming on board in 87, brought him back to top 20 contention. contention. Now Wilson on board wanted to do the same thing, but there's a particular uh, amount of pride that's involved in just getting into Duke University, staying here, graduating, participating in athletics, that just won't let you quit. Here's another look at it. A little bit of a misdirection. They start out to the defense's right and break it back to the left. Everybody pulling or blocking down to their left. Easy into the end zone. Kevin Knox and Tamarek Vanover await the kick by Cochran. Who chops it, and it will be Matt Fryer from his 32. Slip sliding away across the 35 and out to the 37. Florida State dominating in every department this evening, close to 500 yards of a total offense. They have played. Everybody just about that has made the trip. And it's been a very workmanlike effort. From first Charlie Ward and now John Stark. And from the ISA. The tailback starts left, comes back to the near right side. And goes down. Marquette Smith from Castleberry High School, or Castleberry, Florida, Lake Howell High School, swarmed under by Orlando Atwaters. Here you see Charlie on the sideline, his numbers on tonight. A little over 300 in total. Young man standing next to him, Terry Davis, freshman tight end, number 82 from Columbus, Georgia. John Eason, as you see as well, with a headset on. Wide receiver coach. Good move by Smith. Close to the first down and across the 45. Again, that second team offensive line getting some work. Chad Bates, the true freshman. Ford on the freshman. Andy Crow in there at sophomore. The old man of the group, John Donaldson, is a junior. And Jesus Hernandez. Moved over from these guard position, now getting some playing time and tackle. Bobby Bowden will earn this evening his 229th career victory, second only to Penn State's Joe Paterno. And victories among active coaches. Smith unable to escape the leg tackle of David Hawkins. The linebacker and on fourth down, Florida State will try and punt. Hawkins with a nice step. Hawkins with a good move to the outside, cut off the angle on Smith. There was nowhere to go. And he put his 6'3", 240-pound frame on him. And though it be just an ankle, he came down. Les, who suffered his first career block on his last attempt. As Andy Crow set the snap it to him. Breedlove awaits, a big rush. This one, he cannon shoots out of there, and Breedlove all the way back to his 15-yard line. Starts to the boundary, gets the corner, turn! To the 40, spun out of bounds. William Floyd on the tackle for FSU. That'll often happen, the punt after the one block. Everybody stays in just a little bit too much. Everybody holds just a little too long. They don't fan out properly. Breedlove and company able to take advantage of that. I believe we do have a flag down, though. 
here you see it. He's going to stall just a little bit. Lonnie Johnson takes a shot at him, and then he gets behind the wall. There's the flag coming out behind him. William Floyd saving from a longer game. So the 46-yard return is erased. Less than two minutes to go now. Ray Wright spread to the uh, near left side. And at the slot, Stanley Dorsey to the right of your screen. And the quarterback in Fisher near his own goal line. Floats it up the boundary and it is picked up. Intercepted for FSU by James Colsey. Colsey on the INT, the third interception of this game by Florida State. And the freshman from Miami picking off the quarterback in Fisher. Just as we saw in the third quarter. Fisher too late in delivering the ball, but we do have a flag down. I believe it's against Florida State. It'd be interesting to see whether it was before or after the penalty, or after the interception, rather. Colsey doesn't want to give up the football. Man. His uncle, Neil Colsey, of course, was an outstanding professional football player with the Oakland Raiders. Well, Colsey's going to hold on to the football nonetheless. He says, keep it, even if there was a penalty. Oh. Yeah, that's Duke's football he just threw to the Florida State sideline. <laughs> Duke's going to retain possession on the defensive penalty. Well, a personal foul call has erased the interception. 90 seconds to play in this game. Fisher behind the intended receiver, nearly picked off. He was hunting and looking to hook up with T.C. White. Todd Rebull, the linebacker, had an opportunity at the interception and could not scoop it off the mud. Wonder if those jerseys are going to be white, white, and those pants are yellow, yellow when they, they're put through the wash by the equipment staff, huh? Well, Jimmy Calloway and his staff will, will probably soak them the night and get on them first thing in the morning. Speaking of uh, tonight, the Seminoles are due in Tallahassee until 1.30 in the morning. On their charter. That is caught and a flag goes down. The uh, hit a bit early by Florida State's defensive back Byron Capers and a tough catch made by Ray Wright. Nonetheless, even though the early hit. Capers is a little early hitting the receiver before the ball got there. Of course, you can see he's telling to, to his teammates that didn't happen. They did, they're wrong. I was there right on time. Working left to right. Capers is going to come into your pitcher just a little bit early. Catch is made despite the interference. Ray Wright able to bring it in. Still complaining is Capers. He'll learn. He's just a freshman. He'll learn. It doesn't do any good. Well, the best part of this game is a yet to come from here on in. It's probably going to be the postgame show by the marching Chiefs. And what is a rapidly empty Wallace Wade Stadium? Worth sticking around here in the ballpark. Fisher sets up the screen. That is caught. We have another flag down, and down goes T.C. White himself on the receiving end. That will stop the clock with 105 remaining. Todd Rebull made another stop. So the penalties have been mounting here. The call on Florida State. Chuck Amato, the defensive line coach, along with Coach Bowden. Not be particularly pleased with that. You see Chuck in the lower portion of your screen. He played at NC State, was a great player there. Coached for a long while, too. Absolutely. The Wolfpack. Bowden named him his assistant head coach three or four years ago. Gave a lot of the administrative type duties over to him. You'll see. Uh, You'll see Chuck on a sideline in the not too distant future. Uh, he'll be pacing, and his assistant coaches will be doing all the work. He's head coach material if there's ever been any. Bobby Bowden's staff has an average tenure, an average tenure, each member of his staff, in excess of 10 years. The staff has remained intact, a great deal of continuity, and thus that has bred success. 
And the top team in America is set to post its second victory of the year. It stands less than 45 seconds away from doing so. Fisher will throw. That is caught. Spurrier on the receiving end. Leaps into the sky at the midfield stripe and holds on to it to earn the first down. And now Steve quickly up. First down, look up. And out to the near left side. 35 seconds to play. Nearly intercepted and dropped. On the uh, slippery turf by Jermaine Green, the freshman from Brooksville, number 42. Fisher's had a tough go of it this evening. Nine completions in 21 tries, and he's hit but twice in his last nine attempts. And he followed Pickens, Joe Pickens, the transfer from Ohio State who played the first half. And while he was just six for 21, he did manage to put all 53 yards of offense that the Blue Devils registered against Florida State on the stat sheet. That pass is complete by John Jensen with 23 seconds remaining. So the uh, chains are moved forward. This was a torrential downpour for better than two hours, right up to and after kickoff. The rains abated. We had to delay the kickoff. Solid 15 minutes by lightning. It's not rained in the second half, but it's awfully muddy as you see. Penalty marker down again. 13 seconds to go. Offside, the call against FSU. Florida State beginning to rack up the penalties. We talked about it 15 last week. Not so many in the first half of this contest, but here of late it's gotten a little sloppy. Coach Bowden now in his 18th year at Florida State. Has won more games at Florida State than the preceding seven coaches combined, Paul. And while he's on a bit of a winning roll, Duke will suffer tonight. It's seventh consecutive loss. It finished last year with six straight losses and opens up its 1993 campaign on the wrong side of a predictable ledger and hosting uh, the top-ranked team in America. Incomplete with seven seconds to play on first down. The intended target was Ray Wright, quite brave to put his arms up in the air in the middle of that seminal secondary. And Rebull made him pay the price. You know, these uniforms are one thing. You can put them in a washing machine. I don't want to be the guy that's got to clean these shoes. And the helmets. Look at that. And the shoulder pads. Look at that. Now, may have to get new shoes. It may have to throw, throw them away. Throw those out. Nicole will go into the uh, sporting goods store. In a eventful week in the equipment room, both universities. Maybe the final play of this game. Fisher. For the end zone, hums it deep, and it is incomplete. And that'll do it. The pass into the end zone, incomplete, intended for Stanley Dorsey. Florida State, Harold Battles broke it up. And Fisher and Duke have fallen tonight to Florida State. Your final, 45 to nothing, as Bobby Bowden. And the Knowles have beaten Barry Wilson. <laughs> nice moment there. Steve Spurrier Jr. saying hello. It was Pops our tribal. So the Seminoles scoring in every quarter dominate this game uh, probably from the latter stages of the first period on to win it. 45 to nothing. It was a 7 to nothing game at the end of the first quarter. 29 to nothing at intermission. And the Knowles had 16 over the final two quarters. The last points registered, the three in the fourth. On Bentley's 17 